This is a series that we have been wanting to do and everyone has been asking us to do. In fact, we did a webinar last week and the majority of the questions revolved around financial statements. You fix the, the gross profit and the delta between the gross profit and the operation expenses, you're going to win. Revenue will come with it. It will just show up. That's why you need to like and subscribe because we're going to get down to the details to help you build your business. And this doesn't take long. Just a few videos and you can have this stuff figured out. Watch them, re-watch them, share them, ask questions, whatever you need to do. Just like and subscribe and we're going to get you the information that you need. You're entering the No BS Zone with Billy and Landon. Hey, I want to welcome everybody to the No BS Show with Billy and Landon. Today, we are going to do a review about uh, financial statements. Um, this is something that uh, we've been requested to do for quite a while, and we're going to do a small snippet of a certain part of the financial statements and uh, explain that to you and then produce a series weekly on what to do in each line item in the financial statement. Um, without further ado, I'd like to introduce my partner, co-host here, Mr. Landon Brewer. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing fabulous, Billy. I don't know. Maybe we should maybe we should start over from scratch and not tell anybody we're doing anything about financial statements. Maybe because you know, maybe everybody will turn uh, tune out by now. I don't know. <laughs> but to me, you know, the, the weirdo that I am is, you know, I live and die in financial statements. I live and die in KPIs. I live and die in metrics and 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 measurables. Uh, I don't live and die by the the you know technical work of the trade, even though that's super important. But uh, I've always like this has been my sphere, and and since I've been in business, so it's something that's near and dear to my heart. I've taught accounting classes for trade groups. I've done all of this stuff, and I will tell you, I try to make it uh, as non boring as possible. But what we keep repeating on the show is the boring stuff is what matters. Mastering the boring stuff and, and kind of having that boring, consistent day in, day out business and managing by the numbers is the, the one thing that's going to ensure that you're building a growing, profitable company. Man, I agree with you 100%. And then the nice thing about running your business on the P&L statement is, I mean, literally, this is, you know, what you could do is um, if you want to affect something in the P&L, you know, you run outside in the warehouse or run outside and talk to the guys and get something changed and come walking right back in. And 30 days later, you may see a difference in your P&L. If you really got it honed in, you could literally watch it ebb and flow, your decisions. Yeah. And that's what I love about it. I'm, I don't come from the same background as you. I come from the operation side, right? I come from, you know, being out in the field, doing, getting your hands dirty, doing all that. And you come from the finance side. But yet I ended up gravitating towards that's the finance true. side. That's, that's why I'm prettier. Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> too much, too much sun damage for me. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so so really, this is gonna we're gonna keep this very basic, okay? Today we're gonna keep it very basic. And so the very first line item in a P and L statement, and profit and loss, is what P and L stands for, okay? Uh, revenue. Uh, it's referred to by some people as income statement. An income statement. That is true. Yeah. Um, so revenue is the very first line item and revenue is how much money is brought into the business. Okay. And then after that, you have what we call the cost of goods sold. Within the cost of goods sold, you have items like the material cost, the direct labor cost, commissions, subcontractor cost, permitting, and several just other items, depending on how detailed you want to go. But these are just the basic formation of what the cost of goods are. The, the cost of goods or the, the direct costs are just the costs that will change. You know, they will vary based on uh, whether you do more or less revenue, more or less jobs, right? Yep. It's not the static stuff that doesn't change. It's if you sell uh, a job, you're going to have to buy more equipment. You have to buy more materials. You're going to have to pay Installers going to pay technicians. You're going to have to maybe pay a commission. Those things are direct costs that go in the the cost of goods sold. Now, I want to clarify something because this they was asking our our uh, our last uh, kind of town hall meeting. What goes into you said direct labor? What do you mean by direct labor? 
So direct labor is your technicians, your installers, your helpers, um, anybody that goes physically goes to a job. So that's your direct labor. And the, this is where they live and you're in the business. You have service techs, you have, you know, uh, salespeople, you have install crews and the help, you know, the install lead, the helper. All of this is the direct labor that I'm talking about. Um, we capture it all in COGS, cost of goods sold. So this is what it costs you to do these jobs, right? From a labor. It doesn't, it doesn't include any managers, doesn't include. It does any, not. Paying yourself, it doesn't include anybody in the office. That goes below the line. It doesn't go into the direct cost. That is correct. The, specifically above the line. And what we mean when we say above the line is the gross profit, right? And we're only talking about everything above the gross profit because if we fix this correctly, um, big things happen. So, for instance, Landon, did you know this, that for every one point that you improve, your gross profit is 10% or more to the bottom line? You're assuming you got static overhead, right? Yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. overhead for the most part's fairly static, right? Yeah. But it's anywhere from 10 to 11% that go to the bottom line. So if we focus on the the COGS and the cost of goods sold as a percentage, and then if we can improve that, for every point that we improve that, we get 10% to the bottom line in additional money. An additional 10%. Yeah. Yes, an additional 10%. So where would you want to spend all your time if you now that you know this information? Well, that's where I spend my time. That is my number one KPI. I am always looking for how do I improve something one-tenth of a percent and then two-tenths of a percent, you know, by whatever we're doing, whether we're raising prices, whether we're just building a more efficient mousetrap. You always hear me talking about efficiency, and efficiency can take care of this area above the line, above the gross profit. The more efficient you are gathering calls, getting calls, running calls, doing the, the work that the, that's sold from the calls, completing the calls, collecting money on the calls, all this stuff, the more efficient that it becomes, scheduling installations, rounding up the, um, the equipment, having the right parts on the trucks, um, Condensing your service area. All these things affect the COGS. And these are the yep. things that you work on to become to build an efficient business, like what I preach constantly. Because if you don't focus on these levers for an efficient business, you only have two levers to pull to lower, to improve your gross profit. And that is raise your price and beat your uh, vendors down on price. That's all you have until you just until you take over the efficient mindset for a run in your business. And so if some if somebody is not you know not, not, I see this all the time I would get these questions if if you're not achieving the profitability that you want if uh, you you don't have the you know net miss, don't have the gross margin that that you want like where is the first place that you look and I know my answer, but where, where is the first place that you always look? Where is the, you, I know you're an efficiency guru, but where is it at? It's the inefficiency and labor cost is, is the worst. Yeah. It's by far. Yeah. You can go, think about it like this. You can go and beat your supplier down and maybe let's just pretend that you got him to go 10% off. That's nothing compared to what you could do on the labor side of the business. That's a very small yeah. fraction. Um, and it's yes, I'll pain. take it. Don't get me wrong, but it's paying for non-productive, non-revenue producing time. That's correct. If the, the more the more off you are in your gross margin, it's regardless of how you're paying your people. Most most comp plans will work. Some are maybe better than others. Some are more aligned with the strategy, but most comp plans will work, assuming they're not just absurd. You know, just randomly strung together. If if you aren't achieving the gross profit that you want, the profitability that you want, it's almost always nine and a half times out of 10 going to be right in that labor category of you're sending out people, uh, you're paying people for, you know, non-revenue producing tasks. It might be meeting times, travel time, 
uh, warranty time, uh, callbacks, you know, one year old air conditioning tune-ups. Exactly. It's just all this stuff. Um, that just adds up more and more and more. And the biggest culprit of all that blows up your direct labor costs, spiffs, hourly with commissions include and on top of it, bonuses, all this stuff that you come up with to pay your guys and girls out in the field is what's driving your gross profit down. Um, yeah. And we think we need to do all these things. And then we just end up complicating everything. And now we got a 30 plus percent labor cost. And it's hard to take that back once you've already created it. So you must use efficient steps to start lowering those costs. And those efficient steps are numerous. There's hundreds of them, but you have to know how to implement them and when and which ones to implement and what to work on first because you can't work on them all at once. And, and so just for instance, if you sell an air conditioning system, you got, you got to go, someone's got to go get it. Someone, someone has to figure out if you even have it or you have to go get it. How many people are involved in just that one thing? Sourcing equipment. (laughs) You'll be surprised. How many people are involved in just sourcing equipment? Everybody on your payroll. Just about. (laughs) We sold one. Everybody starts working on it, right? That's very inefficient. Makes you wonder what what they're doing when you didn't sell one, right? That's right. It's very inefficient. It is very inefficient. You know, just terrible, terrible inefficiency. You know, are you been trained to sell boxes by your um, best practices groups are your, um, are your vendor or distributor or, or the manufacturer sell boxes, sell boxes, sell boxes. And here's what I see happen so many times is we're so focused on selling a box that when we get denied or they say no, or they can't get credit, we, we just drop the call as a no sell and move on when there's still a repair that could have been made in a customer relationship that could have been built and then get that sale when it's time, um, we end up getting a zero ticket and walk and just wasting that call. I see that happen all the time. Um, that severely affects your gross profit. <laughs> severely. Yep. Um, so it's just little things like that. Do you email? Do you text? Do you call uh, these people when you sell an air conditioner or even a water heater? If I own, you know, own a plumbing company, you, if you're in a, selling water heaters and that's something you do, put water heaters on the truck. You, the cost of going and getting a water heater every time you sell one is just off the charts. It's, it just doesn't make sense. Or put install crews together and they have install trucks full of water heaters. So there's never an issue to, throughout the day. So, so what uh, gross margin percentage do you shoot for? So that's a great question. So the gross margin percentage that I shoot for, the gross profit that I'm shooting for, I'm just going to put it like this. I'm not, I think that a company should at least get themselves to 50% and then start improving it. I mean, I see, I see so many companies that aren't even at 50%. You may have your prices wherever they are, but through all the waste and non-selling and all the stuff that you've created in the payroll system and just the wastefulness of not having a very tightly ran organization, the inefficiencies, um, you may be selling something on a 60% gross margin and you can't figure out why it's 40 when you get your financial statements. Complete opposite. Um, well, there's what I personally shoot for is not actually the gross profit, which I do, okay? But what I'm more interested in, that's such a great question. What I'm more interested in is that delta between my gross profit and my operating expenses. That's where I want to focus. So if my operating expenses, when I hit break even, is 30, I want to, if I can get a 50, I just put 20% to the bottom line. And so let's, that is what I think gets overlooked more than anything. As I, Build, I build my processes to increase that delta because that's where all the money is made. I want to improve my gross profit 
as much as possible beyond my operating expense. And therefore, I can dictate what the bottom line profit is. And so that is the easiest. So what I really love about this, because the way we run a very efficient business, my overhead costs are much lower than the typical HVAC plumbing company because I run a very efficient, lean business, okay? So when I hit... Let me stop you there. Is there any truth to the rumor that besides Elon Musk and Ramaswamy that Trump has tapped you for the new Department of Government... Uh, efficiency. <laughs> he should. That's all I do. <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, you were way into efficiency before Trump and Musk brought it up. I just point that out for everybody. <laughs> yes. Yes, I was. And yes, I still am. It's never ending. You can always continue to improve it. Um, so <laughs> it was a big buzzword for a couple of years, right? Um, right. So anyway, I shoot for that delta, and I do I get I build efficient processes to increase that delta. So look at look at why I do that. So if I want to sell more air conditioners, will I sell more air conditioners at a fifty percent gross profit, or would I sell more at a fifty five percent gross profit? That the, the probably sell more at fifty five percent, but you would hope so. But yeah. but your pricing is much higher, right? So you have a much higher price and you may get it, but what's slipping now is your close ratio. So your close ratio yep. starts slipping back. And so if I want to build my business to where I'm about 26% operating cost so that I can operate all the way down to a 46% gross profit and make 20% to the bottom line. If I, that's what I need to do. So that is something that doesn't get taught at all is that delta between the operating cost and the gross profit. Also, oh, you see go it. for it. Is that, is that how it works? Uh, yes, sir. That's how it works. I like that. Great, great uh, math there, buddy. This, this, this is my, uh, this is my uh, old school whiteboard. Before there was a whiteboard, they had uh, this, Pen and paper stuff. <laughs> we'll let uh we'll let Tim do all the magic. But I appreciate your effort there, Landon. Oh, <laughs> uh, you may I, not hire me for a graphic. I don't know. That looked pretty good. It's in red too. So, it's red. So yeah, you use coloring. <laughs> Did you get that from your daughter? You sitting at your daughter's desk there. <laughs> where's the where's the pink? Where's the multicolored pens we used to have in school? Remember those? Um, I love those. I love those. Yeah. And, and so the delta is what I'm concerned with. So if my, if my um, operating expense is 32%, I have to be at 52. Yeah. If it's 35, I have to be at 55. I mean, that's just really what it comes down to. And so what's really great is you're at a 55 and it's 20, 28. <laughs> that's when it's really yeah. nice, right? And that's how we are able to get the, the really high margins because we use efficiency to to broaden that delta between gross profit and cost. Well, that's really the benefit operating. of scaling your business, right? That's So if you're doing it right and you're really focused on these metrics that we're talking about, if, you're, if you can maintain a gross margin or tweak to slightly improve the gross margin as you grow your sales and you, you don't really raise your overhead because your overhead is pretty static. It may go up a little bit depending on your cost structure, but it, you know, if you you're going from 4 million to 5 million doesn't require much of any more overhead, right? Mm -hmm. So it stays the same. And if you can maintain that 50% gross margin going from four to 5 million, that extra million dollars, $500,000 extra goes to cover that overhead, which is basically prop pure profit. Yeah. So as you scale your business, if you can keep the overhead costs there while you tweak your overhead, that's the, that's the formula for wealth. Yep. And that's why I can go to market out there in the world with, with the customers at a much lower price and make more money than the higher price companies. That is really how you do it through efficient processes. And, and so we're going to dive more and more into these efficient processes as we make more and more of these videos. Um, that's why you need to like and subscribe because we're going to get down to the details to help you build your business. And this doesn't take long, just a few videos and you can have this stuff figured out. Watch them, rewatch them, share them, ask questions, whatever you need to do. 
just like and subscribe, and we're going to get you the information that you need. And so when we come back next week, um, we're going to talk about the actual percentages of each line item. So we're going to go into the details. This week, it's all about the structure of what I'm trying to do. I am trying to get that delta between my gross profit and my operating expense as wide as possible. So, so let me suggest that when uh, in the subsequent weeks, when you're listening, watching, et cetera, to the, the podcast here, besides just popcorn, you know, that, and I'm sure all of you just sit with popcorn and your favorite beverage, like bring up your, you know, print out your most recent financials, print out your most recent P&L. And as we're going through each line item and telling you what the percentage should be, start making notes and, and highlighting the areas that might need improvement. Yeah. And let me say something to that. That's great. That's a great thing there, Landon. So when you print out your P&L, when you do your monthly P&L and then you have your year to date, put the percentage on each month and at the end of the year, the year to date. Okay. And if you do that, you can look at it and compare it to what we're talking about and, and know where you need to make your improvements. So first, an easy one is if, you, if your labor costs, direct labor costs are over 30%, you're, you've got a massive problem, okay? We need to yeah. fix that. Um, that's not even close. I'm trying to run. That's, that's where almost everybody's yeah. got an issue, right? Yes, sir. And with, with the if, appropriate, efficient processes and knowing how to price your product, I think that is the number one thing, knowing how to price your product you have to be able to do this and that's why we spent so much time in our price book and sarah to make it easy to do this and to make it reflect in the financial statements you can't have a price book that takes a hundred hours of man time to change stuff you have to have a price book that you can change on the fly um and in and it's based on margin, just like your financial statements. And when you have this, you can you can literally watch it happen month over month. It starts improving. And that is where I would start for everyone listening. We've got to yep. get your price book right. That's the first thing we got to do. Um, and so, again, this is a series that we have been wanting to do and everyone has been asking us to do. In fact, we did a webinar last week. Um, and we'll put a link up here if you want to, uh, if you want to view the webinar, because uh, we, it was a Q and a ask us anything. And the majority of the questions revolved around financial statements. Yeah. 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 I, I would say that it, add one more thing to this. If you ever peruse any of the, you know, the social media sites or any of the groups that you're on Facebook and all that, I, like I saw one last night and the question was like i'm thinking about starting up a new construction division because of my uh you know shoulder season I need to keep the guys busy blah blah blah. and so you you get i saw he had like 60 people respond to him oh i love new construction oh you should only do home builders and you know big builders or custom builders or avoid it completely and it's all of this information and the answer like is, is don't listen to any of those people the answer is, number one, do you have an, a, an accurate income statement? Do you understand that? Do you understand do you have a, a cash flow statement? Do you understand your financial statements? Do you understand what it would do if you did all of these things? Have you financially modeled it out? If you, if you haven't done that, just trying to keep up. Like, don't make business decisions unless you take into consideration this. What is happening in your financials? If you don't take into consideration what's happening in financials in every business decision, you're inevitably going to make the wrong decision. That is correct. Unfortunately, for a long, long time, we have been taught to focus on revenue and none of the information between that and the bottom line. Just revenue. That's all anybody talks about. I remember during the COVID years, that's all Facebook was about. Oh, my revenue is off the charts. We're blah, 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 blah. Where's yeah. the money? Uh, there's, there's, uh, where's the money? Before, there's several, there's several that reached almost a hundred million dollars out, out in Southern California that either don't exist today or lose money. Yep. I mean, it, it's just, it's just amazing to me. I would rather have a, a million dollar company. that's putting, uh, you know, doing 55% gross margin and putting 
$300,000 to the bottom line, doing a million dollars a year just out of my truck, yeah. than have the liability and risk of a $100 million massive operation that could put you in, in the bankruptcy quickly. Yep. <laughs> yep. Like it has, <laughs> like it has to several. Yes. Yeah. So again, let's practice this. Let's start learning this. Learn how to print off a financial statement with the uh, percentages on them. And even if you don't know what you're doing, just start looking at it and getting ready for this series so that you can learn how to build a great business because it's not all about revenue. You fix the, the gross profit and the delta between the gross profit and the operation expenses, you're going to win. Yep. Revenue will come with it. It will just show up. It's crazy how it works. We're focused on the wrong thing. And with that, y'all have a great day. We're looking forward to um, hearing from you. See you, everybody. See ya. Bye-bye. No BS with Billy and Landon is produced and delivered to you by Sarah Systems. At Sarah Systems, we've created a better way to run your home service business and unlock unprecedented growth. Our field service software was designed by real home service professionals to help you save steps, charge for previously unbillable time, and win more business. But the true change requires more than software. Our live coaching helps you understand and control the aspects of your business that matter most. It's about time for a new era of service and we're leading the way. If you're ready to join the hundreds of other contractors who've been able to increase profit margins more than 50% within six months, visit sarah.tech today. That's sarah, S-E-R-A, dot tech today.